Tulsa and just uh, felt to share a message with you that I shared yesterday in the conference, just as my Sunday service message. Um, I'm just passionate about you people out there that's been listening to my messages on a on a weekly basis and just feel, man, I don't want to just leave you guys out there. I want to just share with you, encourage you. Uh, it's amazing to see how many people, um, you know, that I meet on these trips that they've got no church, they've got no grace church that they go to and that they do see the messages that we preach on a Sunday morning <coughs> as their church and as their fellowship. And uh, not to have a service to me would be devastating in the sense of um, that is what I enjoy. That's where I feel my fellowship. That is um, just wonderful to get that continual input. And it is not a sin to um, have a desire to have in, uh, uh, input on a regular basis. The Bible says that God has given gifts to the body of Christ. He's given uh, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers to encourage the body of Christ until they come to the unity of the faith, that they can understand the dimensions of the love of God. And it is wonderful to want to have regular input um, about the good news and, and, and good news input. Not that we, and I understand that, that not that people's lives um, depend on that and that they have been attached to dynamic love ministries and they cannot live anymore. Uh, it is just wonderful for me to just share this and to know that there is a family out there that's really um, feeling loved and cared for by the messages uh, we minister. And it's good to see and it's wonderful to hear your testimonies. Uh, it's what, you know, just meeting people and, um, you know, when I see them, I, I, friends on Facebook, people that's followed the ministry, I mean, they are in tears, I'm in tears. It's, it's just wonderful to, to meet with each other and to just uh, sit down and chat for 10 or 5 or 10 minutes, even if that's all we have, just to uh, connect a bit. And so I want to just share a message that came to my heart yesterday. So this is not going to be a long message, an hour message. Um, it's, it's, it's about an hour and 30 minutes before I must be at the church. So I was just thinking to quickly make this. I want to read from Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. And just before we get into that, let's just pray together. Father, I want to thank you that I can um, have the honor of sharing your life with people. Thank you, Lord, for the fact that I can uh, reach out to people today by just sitting in my hotel room and uh, making a short recording on my phone and just reach people all over the world. And not just the reaching, but the fact that people can share in your life. And that I can be part of that. And that I can feel the passion that you feel for people. Thank you for that, Father. Amen. You know, I want to start off with this and, and say that the life that God has is so um, rare. That's the right word. It's so rare that it can only be found in Him. It is so... Um, uh, uh, it, it is basically unshareable. You cannot take a little bit of it or a piece of it and break it off and give it to somebody. You know, many times we think that is what God has done. God's plan was to, um, you know, to take people and, and just give them a piece of His life, uh, which would be a little bit of the authentic, you know, but just a piece of God's life. And I want to tell you something. It's impossible to break a piece of God's life off and give it to somebody. You cannot share uh, the life of God in that form. The only way in which you can share it is by ha taking the original life there is and putting it inside a human body. Now, it is so rare, this kind of a life, that it cannot even be removed from God. So God cannot say, I take it out of me and I give it to you. It is only in God. So the only way in which you can be a partaker of His life is if He comes and indwells you. And so you can feel what it feels like to have the life of God. And so you can feel what it feels like to have the very passion that drives God drive you. 
A friend of mine told me the story and he said that he lived in a very rich, uh, a diamond rich area, Cullinan, in South Africa. And uh, then he heard the story and tells it for the truth, that there was a lady that picked up a diamond in her yard. Now because it's diamond rich, you can find diamonds on the ground sometimes, you know, or maybe you dig in the garden and you want to plant a tree and you can, it might just be that you find the diamond. Now De Beers owns most of the mining rights on diamonds in South Africa, so if you find that diamond, it is not yours, even if it was in your backyard, and you can actually do nothing with it because it's an uncut diamond, um, it belongs to De Beers. And then what you would do is, you would take this diamond to the beers and then they will refund you, or not refund you, they will give you the market value for that diamond. And that's the way you deal with that situation. So this lady came and, let's say she was digging in the garden and she found this massive diamond, it was really a big diamond. I mean, she could have retired and never have any financial problems for the rest of her life. And then that afternoon, a beggar came to the door and the beggar knocked at the, on the door and uh, said, um, ma'am, don't you have some food for me? And she looked at him, went into the house, took the diamond and gave him the diamond. What an amazing story. But what really happened, and let's listen to this, is, and, and this is told for the truth, 10 years later, 10 or 15 years later, here the beggar comes back. And same clothes, same situation, his life hasn't changed, but she gave him the diamond. And he reached into his pocket and took out the diamond, still had the diamond, and gave it to her and said, Ma'am, I don't want your diamond. I want that which made you give this diamond. And that is what I call the life of God. That which is inside a man, that which, is, uh, that which was inside God, that made him want to create a human being out of dust. And so I want to share my life with that being. I want this uh, vitality that's in me, this vibrance that's in me, that is exercised in the Trinity, where the Father and the Son <clears throat> trust each other, they are good to each other, they love each other, they influence each other with the most awesome life, which brings forth things like uh, um, gentleness, kindness, meekness, um, you know, I want to share that life with people that they can feel how it feels to have meekness born in them because of this absolute vitality, this life that's in them. And that I want to share with people. That is the very life of God. That's what He's come to share with you. And when He made you, He made you to be a being that can function from that platform. You've been designed by God. You've been shaped by God to... to um, to naturally function in that way. But you know what happened? Um, man got kidnapped by Satan. You know, and Satan came and deceived Eve and, and, and Adam followed after and they fell. And, um, you know, where we were always being the children of God, the very offspring of God, the one in whom we live and move and have our being designed to be this absolute vessel you know, wherein God can come and dwell and this vessel received life. And if God can come and dwell, and dwell this vessel, then this vessel can experience what it is to have God's very life. This vessel got deceived into the fact that you've got life in you, which was actually designed so that you can just, I mean, only things that are alive can actually experience God. So God made a thing that is alive. And Satan came and tricked man into thinking the fact that you are just alive and that you have abilities, um, you know, is enough for you to have the experience of what true life really is. And Adam got kidnapped by the devil and the life that was born into Adam um, was a life that originated from willpower. Uh, and, and, and man was programmed over years with a thing of the devil. He's my father. <clears throat> you know, sin is my father. I've, I've, I, I'm just bad. And um, this system in which man was dumped was called the system of, uh, called the law of sin and death. And what I call it is basically 
partnering or partaking of the death that there is in the knowledge of good and evil. I don't want to make it very technical, but let me just explain what the knowledge of good and evil would be. The knowledge of good and evil is when you have knowledge of the good that is in your life. And then the word evil means to be full of labor, to be full of annoyance, to work hard. So what, what, what Adam basically did was he left the place where he had love as the foundation and not just love as a word but the very life of love that would produce things like generosity kindness uh, um, trust openness of heart a willingness to share a willingness to know another person a willingness to be known by another person um, that he has traded for um, I can have the very same life. I can also have love manifest in me by looking at my variability, the good that is in me, and working that good and creating a life for myself. Making is the system, his father. Now what happened was, and we must realize this, the moment we say that man was lost, the very word lost, defines value and that you belong. Malcolm Smith says it this way. He says, you know, he's got uh, maybe 10,000 paper clips, you know, in his office and he uses them on a daily basis. And you can, you, you can uh, misplace a paper clip but because you've got thousands of them. But you can never lose a paper clip. You know, if you've got a golden pen or your cell phone that is valuable or expensive, you can say, I've lost my cell phone, you know, but you misplace a paperclip which has got no value. You can just go and take another one. In the very same way, man got lost because he's so valuable and because he belongs to somebody. And man got lost in this wrong belief. And when he believed the wrong thing, the end of that was death. And what Christ then came to do was he incarnated himself into that very system. Uh, not to obey that system, but to, and let me see this, he incarnated himself into that system and then died as a man under that system and died the whole system away. So that we don't have to call upon the name of our variability, that we don't have to call upon ourselves, that we don't have to call upon a set of rules and principles to give us life but that we can call upon the name of the Lord. And that is what I want to talk about today. And, and I'm going to end this off by reading this verse and explaining it in short. This is what it says. <clears throat> How shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? Well, let me just go a little bit back there. For whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So let's look at man. Man got lost in Adam. He got lost in this belief. Jesus in a strong belief of, I am what I do. I look at my own ability and my heart and, and, and the good that I that is in me, that God has even given me, uh, given me. And now I work this good, like I have the ability to, um, to give something. And then if I give something and I continually can continue, Continue to give it, then I can be seen as a generous person. Maybe you can be seen as a generous person by people, but by giving money to people, it can never produce the very source of life that made God give His Son. Because at the end of the day, the gospel is not about what you give to somebody. It's about having the very life that made God give things. And that life can only be attained by Him sharing it with you by him indwelling you and saying to you come here let me indwell your heart let me indwell the very fibers of your being and then then you can feel with me you can think with me you can believe with me and that's what the bible says god works in us both to will and to do and that is what paul said it is not i who live but it is christ who lives in me and it is the love of God that compels me. And this is the love of God. 
that God incarnated the death and died the death of every man. And when one died, all died. Glory to God. When one was raised up and seated at the right hand of the Father, He was raised up on behalf of us all, so that we now that are in this death can hear this good news of the message of where we really belong and call upon that truth and so be saved from the lie and what it produces in our life. We must realize this lie and what it produces is not just a small matter. It produces death in us and it can even produce eternal death in us. Um, so this is not just a game. It is, it, we need to realize what God has really done. And I'm going to just read a verse that's going to blow your mind today. Let us just, it, man, I think it's going to blow your mind and your heart, your belief. And that's what it's actually about. We don't want to just blow people's minds. We want to blow their beliefs uh, so that we can believe what God believes. And, and here it goes. It says, So whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him who, of him who they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Now let us just look at the word call upon there. For whosoever shall call upon, and I'm just going to read it directly from the Greek here, to put a name upon, to surname. And how it explains further here, to permit oneself to be surnamed. So, here we are. What Christ has done, when the truth is preached, and the person in the world hears the true gospel, he will say, I allow you to surname me with the very name of God. That's what it means to call upon the name. I remember years ago, I would um, go to the company where my dad would work, and then I would even drive without a license, and, uh, um, you know, go. my dad would call me, I would come, I would drive without a license, go to the gate, and then I would say, um, Harvey Brits is my father. Now, what I was doing was, I was surnaming myself, as Brits, giving me the right to pass through that gate to go to my dad and bring him coffee or bring him a meal or help him a little bit with his work at there or whatever because he, he used to work through the night many times, you know, at that company. So I, I come to the gate and I allow what my, 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 my father, my heart allows me to say, I'm the son of Harvey Brits. In the very same way, if the true gospel is preached, the Bible says, how will the world allow themselves to be surnamed with the name of God if they have not heard the true gospel? What does that make the true gospel out to be? A message wherein even the sinner has got the right to say, there's enough facts placed in front of me that my heart would allow me, I believe now, I can believe that wouldn't be wrong, to write the name of God behind me. And the moment we have heard a message that's good enough, that we can be surnamed with the name of God, where your heart will allow you to be surnamed with the name of God, that day you are saved from the lie and its effects. The power of the law and its sin breaks over your life, or, or it's loose, it, it, it breaks from your life. You set free from it. Let me read again, and I'm going to, uh, um, you know, end off with this. Here it is. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? Okay. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? Called on. How then will they permit themselves to be surnamed with the name of God? I'm not a child of the devil. I'm not a child of sin. I belong to God. He's ended the law system. I don't belong to Him. I was kidnapped. And then in, this, in being kidnapped in Adam, my, my great-great-great-grandfather was kidnapped, stolen by some thieves 
you know, by the devil. And we grew up under him. And we always thought that the devil is our father. But God came and broke the bondage of the enslavement of Satan in Christ. And now and now I can believe that my king is Lord. And he, my father, is the Lord. And I have the right to say that I am a, 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 a I, I, I'm surnamed by, with the very name of God, with I am, with, with, with the name of Jesus, you know, the Savior, my brother, my, my Lord, my King. I'm surnamed with that. I'm fully the God kind. I am not slave. And the moment we believe that, we are saved. Calling on the name of the Lord doesn't mean, help Lord. It means, I allow you to surname me. It is so sad to think that there are people that would reject this. Because the very next, you know, the Bible says there are those that have not believed our report. What is the report? That God is your Father. Amen. Jesus even said, Jesus even said to unsaved people, Why do you worry about money? Don't you know that your Heavenly Father, what he was doing was he was surnaming them. He would say, my God and your God. My Father and your Father. Are you willing to be surnamed today? You shall be saved. You know, I cannot have a lack of money surname me. I cannot have uh, people rejecting my message. And that law of if they accept you, you're blessed. If they reject you, you're not blessed. Surname me. My heart doesn't allow that. There's not enough evidence. But when I look at all the evidence, when I look at the history, when I look at where I come from, when I look at where you come from, when I look at what Christ has done and how the law system was ended, how he's redeemed mankind, brought mankind back, now I can come with the message of your redemption and you can call upon the name of the Lord. You can. To call upon the name of the Lord is, I allow you God. To surname me. A very good example of that was when Jesus Christ was born. When he was born, the Bible said, Peace on earth and goodwill towards man. In Afrikaans it says, A good reputation assigned to every man. How could, our, how could we have a good reputation? Reputation uh, goes hand in hand with what you have done, the good you've accomplished. And here it comes and it says, a good reputation to mankind. How is that possible? It's because the name of God in Christ is written behind every person's, about, behind the name of every person. And those who believe it allows that truth into their heart. And then they are born again. They are not born from the lie of rejection. They are now born from the truth. And now they are saved from the lie in this life and they are born of this new truth to experience the authentic life inside them you are deeply loved my friend you are deeply cared for hallelujah you know i would um, like to just end this with a prayer for you father i want to thank you that i can pray for these lovely people that are watching that took out the time to just watch this 20 or 30 minute uh, message Thank you, Father, for your passionate reach towards them. I thank you, Lord, that this message will just overwhelm their hearts and their minds to the point where we, with tears, just say, Thank you, thank you, thank you. You can put your name on me. I'm not ashamed that I have righteousness as a gift. I'm not ashamed that I've been saved from the law as a way unto salvation. I'm not ashamed to say, God is my Father. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. I declare the people that listen blessed, protected, and cared for. Amen. I would like to invite you to go to my itinerary on my website. Just go to latest news on my website. That would be dynamicministries.com. And um, click on latest news. And you'll see my whole itinerary. If you are in the area or close by where I preach, please make some effort to come to the meetings. I would love to meet with you, just give you a hug, and uh, 
just see who are the people that we are impacting on the web. Thank you so, so much for um, going through that effort. And I know you'll be deeply encouraged by meeting with other brothers that believe the same. God bless you.